Great, welcome back everyone to another amazing episode of our hot powered inspirational interviews. And as every time, also today, we have an amazing guest. His name is David Thompson, and you definitely want to keep this name in mind. He's a great friend of mine and really an, um, one of the most impressive beings I've met in business and around this world, really. Um, he is really very special and has a special history and background. He actually grew up in a children's home, um, and at the age of 16, um, he joined the army having no qualifications when he left school. When he joined the army, of course, he served in a great way uh, for five years, but not only that, he always was striving to be the best. So he became a boxing champion. At the age of 21, he worked in a shoe factory. But guess what? Not for long, because he was into learning more and growing and developing himself. So he actually started to study, um, you know, and became a financial advisor. And uh, even already back then, being a financial advisor, he was always very interested in how do you become persuasive? And guess what? Within actually a pretty short period of time, he became the top financial advisor in the UK. And not only that, from there, he went on and he built several amazing businesses, sold them, made quite a few million uh, pounds over the years. And also he kept studying. So he's today one of only 19 people on the planet certified to teach influence by the world's leading social psycholo uh, psychologist, Dr. Robert Cialdini. He can tell you one or two things about persuasion and influence. He's also an international speaker and uh, he keeps rocking the world and he's cooking up something amazing right now. So please, even beyond this interview, keep an eye out for David Thompson because, well, there's something big coming up soon. Well, David, it's amazing to have you with us today. Welcome. Hi, Monique. I mean, hi, everybody. Really pleased to meet you. And uh, thank you for such a beautiful introduction. I'm not worthy. Hopefully I can add some value to your lives today and you know to share some magic some stuff that's helped me over the years become really persuasive really influential and then get people to move in your direction because that's what persuasion is all about there's a science to it it's fun and when you know how to apply it you can get success on your own terms and life to work for you on your own terms so this will be fun great it's great to have you on so let's jump right in and a question i'd like to ask you i know david it's not easy times right now what do you do personally right now to stay positive, vibrant and in the vortex? My favorite thing to do is to keep studying and keep learning and then also keep moving forward. That's to me, that, 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 that's what it's all about. And a friend said to me, how do you define success? How, how do you define what success is? And to me, success is about getting to the point where you're absolutely comfortable with yourself where you're completely comfortable with you. So you're playing full out to the best of your ability. And if you're completely com comfortable with yourself, then you know you're doing all that you can. And so for me, that's what it's all about. So it's about learning, doing a little bit of exercise and then just mixing with brilliant people. Obviously, hence the reason why we're talking today. Yeah, exactly. So David, I know that, uh, you know, uh, no matter what happens on the outside, you're always finding ways uh, to really step up and step forward. And, uh, um, what do you do actually right now? What are some of the things you do right now to really, no matter what's happening around us right now, um, that really help you to bring your business and what you're doing to a next level? So my foundation of learning is something I learned from a great guy called William Clement Stone, who created a, a multi-billion pound insurance company called the Aon Corporation. And in 1990, after I was a soldier, I'd come out of the army, I read his book, which was called The Success System That Never Fails. And the essence of that book is about one thing. It's about a positive mental attitude. He says there's three things you need to do to be successful, which is inspiration to action. That's actually getting off your ass and doing something, something we all need to do all of the time. Activity knowledge, know what it is that's working, know what it is you're doing, and then know how. But underlying all of it, it's a positive mental attitude, which from my perspective, one of the core things is, is understanding the exact definition of it. So if I had to ask, you know, 100 people what their definition of a positive mental attitude, most people would think it's about smiling a lot or just being nice or being kind. 
but it's not. It's, it's actually a tool. It's a real skill that when applied can affect your whole life. And it's, it's got like three different parts to it. And the first part is the definition of a positive mental attitude, which is the right mental attitude in any given set of circumstances, incorporating the plus traits of life, such things as hope, faith and integrity. So that's the definition of a positive mental attitude. And if you ask most people what a negative mental attitude, what, what the opposite of a positive mental attitude is, they would say it's a negative mental attitude. But it's really not that. It's not a negative mental attitude. But a negative mental attitude is this. It's the, the wrong mental attitude in any given set of circumstances incorporating the negative traits of life. Most people think that's the opposite of a positive mental attitude, but it isn't because to be negative, it's really quite hard because if we're being negative, if we're slagging somebody off or we're saying something, our conscience gets the better of us. We feel bad inside. You can't say something negative and feel good. So it's hard to be negative. But what we do do, the best friend of a negative mental attitude, that's where negativity really creeps in. It's called inertia. We tend to go inert. And I was talking to a guy I was teaching the other day, I was coaching, and I was sharing with him what inertia is. And inertia is, was, is best friends with the Greek goddess Circa. And it's that stay here and do nothing. It's when people should do something, but they fail to act. It's when we could be positive, but we don't say anything. So what we tend to do is we go inert. And the key to a positive mental attitude is to recognize those, recognize those times when you should act, but what you do is you go inert, you sit back and you wait. Like now, everybody is suppressed. Like the world's suppressed. Everybody's being held inside. Some people will come out of this like a jack-in-the-box. They'll absolutely spring out and they'll fly. Other people will come out like a three-legged hunting tortoise, crawling out, and they'll miss the boat because it'll be a land grab. People will go and grab territory. They'll change and they'll do incredible things. And we only have to look at the last like, time we had any kind of suppression, 2008, when great brands and great businesses were created, like huge brands. There was millions of businesses created, but Uber came out of that. Airbnb came out of that. And, and, and you know, the, these are great brands. They're not relating to us, but there'll be a million small businesses around where you are that are like you that actually did something whilst the fog was down. They thought, they planned, and they acted, and so they came out like that. And that's the essence of a positive mental attitude. How can you take action, not sit around in a moping, whinging and crying, but actually looking at it and saying, okay, if it's, if it's to be, it's up to me. How can I make the most of this situation and be positive, take actions? And that's where I live. That's where my, um, my life is like growing up in a children's home. It was tough. But if you take action, you get outcomes. Does, does that answer? I, absolutely. I love it. And now, of course, you know, uh, the obvious question from that is, what do you do right now, David? How do you take action? I know you're the master of persuasion and influence um, and you're having quite some things in the, in the making right now. So yeah. um, you say, hey, there's a lot of people that do something in the fog and they're going to be coming out and in a great way. Um, what are you doing right now to actually bring your own platform, your business, your knowledge, your wisdom out there in a greater way? So I'm developing a learning platform that will create a paradigm shift in the way that persuasion and influence is taught. Because it, from, from my perspective, when you come from nothing, so if you're here and you've got nothing, and, you know, an, an infinity and beyond, like Buzz Yacht, like you would say, is over here, and you want to go there, you have to take action and take steps. And so what I recognized was that when I first got my job as a financial advisor, and I, all of a sudden I've got this job that is beyond my wildest dreams, You've got a kid that's had nothing, that's been in a children's home, that's thought, oh my God, this is a nightmare. And then all of a sudden I get this job as a financial advisor. You know, I felt like I'd won the lottery. So at that time, I thought, how do I keep this job? How do I keep this job? How do I stay here? So I started studying, negotiating. And I started asking people, how do I become brilliant as a financial advisor? And, they, and all I was told was, copy Sharon, do what she's doing. I'm like, that's not gonna guarantee that I get the job. So I started studying negotiating, neurolinguistic programming, pitching, framing, storytelling, every aspect 
that has to do with the DNA of persuasion so that you can get to a point where you say, how do I define success? Let's get to the point where you're completely 100% absolutely comfortable with yourself. And so as I learned new skills, I started to get more comfortable. So now what I've thought is how do I distribute my knowledge and teach the world how to be more persuasive so that you get your own way every single time it's possible for you to get your own way or you represent yourself and have the best version of yourself. So I've been creating a technology, a digital learning platform. And then I've also got a videographer. That was my first hire to tell this thing through stories. And the reason I've done that is because I'm dyslexic. So dyslexia for me means it's hard for me to write things. It doesn't mean I can't, but it's, it's more difficult for me to write things. It's almost impossible to read because my brain just gets kryptonite eyes, if that's even a word. But t telling stories through video, I think that's more interesting. Hence the reason why you know, we're talking on video. So the, my, my key thing that I'm doing right now that's unique that I don't know anybody else that's doing in the world is building a true transformation program so people can learn about negotiation, feel comfortable with it, learn how to open a conversation, feel comfortable with it, know how language works, feel comfortable with it, and then know how to build an organization whereby you can either be a brilliant person at persuading or influencing other people. Alternatively, you can build a company where you can build your own people that would be great like that. Yeah. It's amazing what you're saying and so many nuggets of gold. It's really like, ask yourself, A, what are you good at, right? And you know, learn the skills. Um, also, as you said, find people that do what you want to do and but don't just anyone, but the best of the best. Only the best. Learn from them, okay, uh, apply it, but then do it in your own way, right? So that you, again, you're not just a copycat, you are actually still yourself and you can do it even better than, you know, a lot of other people. I love, and I've seen actually what you're building right now, David, and it's amazing and we've already been brainstorming about it, right? Yep. So um, it's an amazing platform and uh, we know that persuasion and influence is just a it's just the underlying foundation of anything we do, right? So if you master that skill, you can make anything happen. And as in the speech that you recently gave, right? If we teach our kids or others, oh my God, we're going to change the world, right? So what is one thing in a concrete way? If people say, well, you know what? This whole persuasion and influence thing, I love it. It sounds amazing. But what can I do today in a very concrete way to become more persuasive and more influential? So I've been working with the world's most quoted social psychologist on the topic of influence. His name's Dr. Robert Cialdini, and he helped Obama get elected into the White House. So I did a course with him three years ago, almost to the day, and um, I was selected to be one of, you know, a handful of people out of, you know, the billions of people in the world, there's only 19 people that he certified to teach his magic. And so one of the first things we teach is how to build relationships, how to build relationships. And one of the biggest things about building a relationship with somebody is actually doing something for the other person. So here's one thing you can do for the other person. You can make them feel obligated to pay you back. Obligated to pay you back by helping them in the first instance, by utilizing the principle of reciprocity. And reciprocity is this. We feel obligated to give back to others the same form of service they've given to us. So if somebody does you a favor, right, you feel like doing them a favor. So if I do you a favor, you feel like you owe me a favor. If I remember your birthday with a gift, when it comes to my birthday, you feel like you should remember my birthday with a gift. And so in society, in the human society that we live in today, we're the only species on this planet whereby we can give resources away without giving them away. What we get back is a credit. So we need to work out when we first meet somebody, what we can do for that other person. How can we help somebody else? But there's a magic key to it, and I'll share it with you now. The magic key is this. It's not just about helping somebody else. It's about how you can evaluate, how you can like um, increase the power of the thing that you do for that other person. And it's about three specific conditions. It's about saying, how can you do something that's meaningful? that's unexpected and also customized. They're the three magic things with reciprocity. So it's not about just giving a favor, doing a favor for 20 people all the same. It's about saying, what can I do for this individual in front of me that's meaningful to them, something they're genuinely gonna value. And also something that's over and above. Over and above. 
you know, that's over unexpected. So for example, in my house, right, in my house, every time the bin's full, my wife always gets me to take the bin out. And I usually do that every time. So me taking the bin out, that's, that's a nil. That's, that's nil. There's no win in that. But if I fill the dishwasher up, something I don't ordinarily do, and I say, and I did that, that's meaningful. It's unexpected. And it's also customized, something my wife would ordinarily, ordinarily do. So she'll like that. And she'll say, oh, thank you. And I'll genuinely get a thank you. And it's not about just doing things like big things. It's often it's just the smallest thing. Sending somebody a message and saying to them, you know, I was thinking about you today. I just wanted to check you're okay. And if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. That's meaningful. It's unexpected. And it's customized. So often you can give gifts, but they don't have to be huge gifts. They can just be a text message. They can be just a little, a, a, a something small. It could be a flower you pick in the garden and say, I thought this was pretty and I got it for you. Often it's tiny things. When we do that, what that does from a shortcuts perspective, and this is the shortcut, is it's, it helps to form a relationship. Because when somebody does nice, something nice for you, you feel obligated, and that's the key word here, obligated to do something nice for them. But it must be meaningful, unexpected, and customized. You can't do the same thing for 20 people and then expect them to feel obligated to do something for you. So that's my gift to you is, when you meet somebody for the first time, don't think, how can they help you? Think, what can I do? What can I genuinely do to help this person? Because that will help to form and strengthen a relationship or even mend a broken relationship. Love it. It's such a powerful tool. And uh, as David, you're also part of our hard powered global nation community. And all of you in there, you can actually, you know, just apply right away what, Dave, uh, what David is suggesting. Why don't you go in and you find someone, you know, or even someone you don't know, you reach out to them, you can actually do exactly what David is saying, even within our community. If you don't know anyone in there or you don't feel comfortable doing it there, in your environment, you know, maybe some of your clients that are struggling right now or some of your loved ones or whoever else, play with it, you know, try it out. But I'd love to see actually um, you doing it within our community if you can, because hey, we, this is not just a community to tap in and take whatever we need. It's a community where we build relationships, where we build intimacy. It's like, you know, creating a family where we support each other. So again, try it out and it creates miracles. And if anybody's got any um, questions or wants to know how to do this, I'm here. Just reach out, reach out and connect. And I'll give you some guidance, some advice. I can tell you 20 ways that I've applied reciprocity and the difference it's made to my life but it's about you and what you want to do. So if you have any questions and you say, I'd like to motivate this person to move in this direction from where we are here to get them to do that, but my relationship's not strong and I can share some things with you that you can do, concrete things that you can absolutely do to strengthen that relationship. Yes. And within, within influence, with influence what, what, what I share and teach is there's three different levels. There's building relationships, there's overcoming uncertainty and motivating action. The first part is building relationships and reciprocity is one of the shortcuts. Love it, David. You and I could keep talking for hours and hours, right? But uh, you just made a very generous offer that people can reach out to you and connect with you. Where do they find you? Yeah. So the easiest place to find me is on LinkedIn. And my LinkedIn is David Thompson. And my Thompson spelled a peculiar way. It's T H O M. S O N. There's no P. So T H O M S O N. And then after it, it's C M C T, which is Caldini Method Certified Trainer. There's only one of those in the world that you'll find. So David Thompson, T H O M S O N, C M C T. You'll find me on LinkedIn. Connect with me there, or you can drop me an email. My name's David at davidthompson.com. Either way, LinkedIn's easy, and I always respond. I can tell you that David is one of the greatest gifts in my life. I feel so blessed to have you, David. So you and I exchange ideas on a regular basis, right? We create a lot of magic together these days. 100%. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for being with us uh, today. And thank you for checking in and, uh, you know, uh, really taking inspiration uh, away from our regular interviews. So again, we're going to be back soon with another episode. Um, David, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us and uh, have an incredible day. Yeah, guys, you stay inside, wash your hands and stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bye. see you. Bye.